sheer scale of them. Like oh, it, it, f it flies in the face of logic. Like the really the does. actual archaeologists that want to lock this down and try to come up with some sort of a conventional reason. <laughs> And, you know, some sort of an explanation that we can all get behind. Oh, they used pulleys and pushed them on logs. Like, yeah. shut the f*** up. <laughs> yeah. Just shut the f*** up. What you're saying doesn't even make any goddamn sense. It's way more likely that there was incredibly sophisticated technology that existed. And it's way more likely, in face of the evidence of the Younger Dryas Impact Theory, yep. that that shit was wiped out. And that we're talking about a really advanced civilization that lived a long time ago. That's more advanced than we are today but moved in a different direction. Like we moved right. in the direction of combustion engines and electronics and... The whole previous episode, I mentioned it, they're gonna bring it up again, the Thunder Stone, uh, which is the heaviest stone ever moved in history. Now, this is the Alexander Column in St. Petersburg in Russia, just a stone's throw away. Huge piece of stone, over 600 tons, I'd, uh, they say 600, I'd say closer to 640 based on the diameter and the uh, weight of granite per cubic metre. It's not listed in the uh, heaviest monoliths, it should be right up there near the top. It's larger than Pompeii's pillar in Alexandria. This is the largest, heaviest column ever erected, ever. So it's, you compare it to an obelisk here. Yeah? heavier than any obelisk that was ever moved. So again, the 1,200-ton obelisk in the Aswan Quarry never moved. 1,000-ton statues, yes, So, but let's stick with this for Alexander Column, right next to the Bronze Horseman. Uh, source of the stone was over there in Finland, not too far away. Thunderstone is from here. Thunderstone, it was moved. Uh, again, I'll say... You'll mention this later, oh yeah, but they moved the, the Thunderstone on steel ra rails and bearings. Okay, fair enough. Boulder itself was much heavier to begin with, but they definitely moved it. They moved it on on a barge, and again, a warship on either side for propulsion, more than anything. Then their story is there was three ships on each side. Again, always adding things that weren't there, creating problems that don't exist. This is ancient technology, very, very ancient technology, a winch, which is essentially a gearbox and a block and tackle or compound pulley system. Uh, Romans did it uh, 16th century the, in Rome. The Pope re-erected and moved some of these giant, absolutely massive obelisks as well. And he did it by reinventing this ancient technology, bronze horsemen and the thunderstone, uh, sorry, the Alexander Column. It come from Viralati, so cross land, further, probably, you know, than, than the, any of the obelisks or statues that were moved across land onto a boat and then back onto land. Now, he's, so 600 tonne, 650, I'd say, more likely, um, but originally extracted as a block, so you would add a, a, a quarter. So again, this is a thousand tonne, you know, just short of a thousand tonne block and, um, of stone and you see how it was brought out. Rolled then onto the barge. Now, because it was circular, it could be rolled, but there was a bit of a problem even like loading it onto the barge. But they managed it okay. They were able to sort that thing out. And when they say a huge barge, so there you see a you know, cross-section of the barge. So just say that's one unit see one two and three so to get something to float uh, granite is per cubic meter 1.2 2.7 tons i just say three ton this black water what's a cubic meter of water a ton so cubic this so you, the barge has to displace three times as much water as as the block itself so if they make a huge barge it's because they're making a huge moving a huge stone so this is uh, again when you'll hear these people talk, the barge oh, it was huge but it's huge everything's huge huge well if the stone you know you're not going to put a little barge on a giant stone so again it's all about exaggerating now all timber construction the timber didn't collapse again this is heavier than any obelisk ever moved uh, comparable to the thousand ton statues such as at, at the Ramesseum and how did they move it on rollers wooden rollers 
So, and they weren't using electricity and they weren't using combustion engine to do this. This was ancient technology. So when, again, this, they must have used and shut the hell up. You can't, ex your theories are stupid and they don't explain anything. No, it's because, you know, right back at you. You know, if you, if you have no interest in it, then you don't know it. But then if you're then pushing this, well, oh, but they must, and then it'll be, oh, but no one, the archeologists have never moved a thousand ton block on wooden rollers. Well, are you gonna pay, do you know what the, just the insurance on something like that would be? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a stupid request, it's a crazy request, and it's one, well, it began with, you can't cut, and you'll say, well, no one's ever cut a block in half. He's gonna say this in a moment. Well, originally the thing was, well, you can't do it. And it's, OK, you can do it, but it's only like a, a millimetre an hour. And then I, scientists against Smith, myself, did experiments. No, we get much faster rate than that, a rate that's comparable to modern granite gang saws. And then it's, oh, well, you, ha I, you have to show me a block being cut in half. Well, you know, the entitlement of these people, you know, that they're all so dumb and their, their theories are stupid and you must show me, well, you get... Uh, what have they contributed? What have, what have they done? Apart from sensor information, the very information that they asked for. So this, uh, again, wooden rollers, we'll come to this in a moment. We'll look at the, the strength of wood. It's just completely made up, or maybe originally, but for years now they've known it, but they still sell this because if it's a house of cards and if one of their cards gets pulled out, then the whole grift starts to um, collapse. So capstans... This was the, how they did it in the Vatican and how they did it in the Romans. So moving it is much easier. It's like a child can push a two-ton car across, but lifting it is a very different operation. So there are also other ways to erect an obelisk that do, do, does not require lifting. Uh, the sand pit method is one that has been tested. It, these other things, it's a very expensive operation so that people can you know, lose a lot of their money uh, risk serious injury so that these knuckleheads, you know, can, and then they'll just shit, well, now you need to do this. You know, oh, but now build me a pyramid. It never ends. Um, and again, Joe Rogan, Bright Insight, Uncharted X, what, what have they contributed? What have, Are they willing to put any effort in? I've seen that. They just point at stones and say anti-gravity, archaeologists are stupid there. And we'll, we'll see in a moment, he accuses them of like that they're living some BMW lifestyle and they don't want this truth to come out because, you know, it's going to threaten their lifestyle. Literally, the guy's got a $150 million contract, you know. Uh, these other lost high tech, not, the, the algorithm loves them. I've got no idea what they're earning on Patreon and, and their AdSense accounts and through their other monetized things, but they seem to be doing quite well and they have not contributed one cent. Entitlement, lazy and lies and frauds scam. And they moved in some other direction, but achieved maybe many thousands of years more sophistication in that direction than we have with our internal combustion engines and electricity right. and yep. all the shit that we use. And it's important for people to understand that these primitive methods that are suggested and, and pushed very hard by the, quote, mainstream, they don't test any of these. Like, show me them moving, you know, a thousand tons stone on logs. Let's, right. let's see that. Uh, they don't show. They've never cut one single box, like you said, in half or even. Again, show this must be shown to me. I, I I have no responsibility. Like I'm asking the questions, but I have no responsibility. Scientists against Smith, myself, have cut granite and basalt. Posted the videos, even the real time videos. He, the, the challenge remains open, live stream challenge, so that these lost ancient high technologists who want this, you know, we can do it in real time, and we'll do the cuts, and we can work out the. The rate, but if they want to cut through a meter, well, then we're going to have a long live stream, live stream, because it's going to take uh, a while. But they will, they just censor this information, and they go on these podcasts and blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, look, here in the old days, people used to cut stone by hand, by saws. Uh, again, like the lazy entitlement of it, it must be shown to me, but I, I will not contribute anything. People do the experiments to show you cutting rates. Well, I'm only going to keep showing the one old 30-year-old clip of Dennis Stocks uh, because, you know, that suits my narrative. And then I'm going to say it's only like a millimetre an hour, which is just not true, and they know it, but they censor this information. People just used, used to work hard. Uh, this is just totally lost on these people. And, well, 
even when it's provided to them, they just don't, because it, it breaks the narrative. This is the lost ancient high technology grift. Thousand ton blocks that came over mountains that were never cut from the mountains, they were cut next to the, to the river. The barges would collapse and on the wood would crush and it's all made up. And even you try and be polite, here's the information, they ignore it and they censor. And because this, this is a, a grift, it's an industry, it's, it's, it's a cult in that way because information is not able to be absorbed in. That's contrary to, to the belief system. The belief system must be protected at all counts. Hyperbolic exaggerations, outright lies, censorship, just no, 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 I don't want, I'm asking a question, but I, I don't want to hear the answer. And then this, you know, well, the archaeologist, shut the floor and explain it. No, no, you, you must participate. If you're not, if you're going to censor information, you're going to remove what you don't want to be heard, you're going to exaggerate. It's very, very clear that you know, it can't be just ignorance. It is, it's a, it, it is a cold. It's deliberate to protect this information in this system. And then advert, you know, the, the comet impact, apocalyptic aspect of it. And it, it, the way it fits into the cult mentality is, is very, very obvious. Even completed one single average size box or any box. I mean, yeah. I say box, I'm talking about a stone block with the primitive methods. Well, Show you me. have shown that they've moved that one 1,000 ton stone. Right. The Thunderstone, yeah. yeah. But, but there's no, well, again, they weren't using but it's railway not tracks nearly and bearings. Right. And it's ball sophisticated, bearings. It's, but yeah. also the way it's constructed, it's just a rock. It's you, not right. like this amazing obelisk that's carved out of a mountain a thousand right. miles away. It's not, there's nothing like that. Right. There's also no evidence for it in dynastic Egypt. That's the other thing. They can't the, the earliest parts of, look, the crazy thing about it is in the Old Kingdom, the, the, the mainstream archaeologists, there's some disagreement on this, but in general, they don't give them the, they don't grant them the ability to even quarry granite. They say that in the Old Kingdom, they couldn't quarry granite. They made all of their granite artifacts from surface granite. It's just so we begin with, they couldn't quarry granite. Well, there's some disagreement. So some agree that they do, but that's what, beside the point, because surface granite, why would you quarry down? You would use surface granite first. Uh, that it begins on the surface and you quarry down, and then once you've ex exhausted the surface granite, then you start quarrying down. So of course that would be first, but people still now will exploit the surface granite. Uh, so again, archeologists, why don't they, Joe Rogan and these other people, look at the history of quarrying, speak to quarry people? This is not some secret esoteric science. You begin at the surface and you quarry down. Uh, it's just the way it is. Stone on the surface, you quarry it. Surface granite, you take those pieces out. It's already broken into pieces for you. It's, it's just sitting there. It's, uh, it's a silly claim that I've, you know, and again, why won't the archaeologists do this? I don't go to a florist and, and tell him, why don't you fix my car? Uh, again, now then, you'll, 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 I've done other videos on this, you'll encounter, oh, but they had primitive tools. These are steel tools and they're also primitive. You can just look up any video of people working granite by hand with these tools and it's tap, 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 flake away. Steel is not some magical, mystical material that embodies precision and, and chews through granite as, as if a hot knife threw butter. This was how before machines uh, made work easy. Go to a surface quarry and you start chipping away and this is just the way that it was. Again, oh, but the archaeologists must do it. No, 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 no. If, if you really... For surface quarry, this is just silly and it, some disagree, but then he goes straight to, oh, but the ones who say they couldn't quarry granite, then he takes them as the example. So uh, it's create a problem which doesn't exist, choose the sources which best fit your narrative, and then say everyone else must now go and make blocks and move thousand ton blocks f for you, but you have no interest in these topics. And uh, so, yeah, once you exhaust the surface granite, which they would do in the older quarries, chasing the high quality granite, they would then move down and quarry out the granite, just like in ancient Egypt. From surface granite, it's just, it's the most, it's the craziest thing. No, no wheel, no use of the wheel. 
Uh, never in the Egyptian civilization did they grant them the use of the pulley. It was it was literally um, human horsepower, ropes, levers, and wooden sleds. That's it. The Romans came along and the Greeks, and they started using pulleys and force multipliers and stuff like that. But they don't. There's no evidence for that in the dynastic Egyptian. Have you Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. There's also no evidence for it in dynastic Egypt. That's the other thing. They can't. The earliest parts of, look, the crazy thing about it is in the Old Kingdom, the, the, the mainstream archaeologists, there's some disagreement on this, but in general, they don't give them the, they don't grant them the ability to even quarry granite. They say that in the Old Kingdom, they couldn't quarry granite. They made all of their granite artifacts from surface granite. It's just, it's the most, it's the craziest thing. No, no wheel, no use of the wheel. Uh, never in the Egyptian civilization do they grant them the use of the pulley. It was, it was literally um, human horsepower, ropes, levers, and wooden sleds. That's it. The Romans came along, and the Greeks, and they started using pulleys and force multipliers and stuff like that, but they don't... There's no evidence for that in the dynastic Egyptian Have civilization. You ever had a... There's also no evidence for it in dynastic Egypt. That's the other thing. They can't... The, the earliest parts of... Look, the crazy thing about it is in the Old Kingdom, the, the, the mainstream archaeologists... There's some disagreement on this, but in general, they don't give them the... They don't grant them the ability to even quarry granite. They say that in the Old Kingdom they couldn't quarry granite. They made all of their granite artifacts from surface granite. It's just, it's the most, it's the craziest thing. No, no wheel, no use of the wheel. The issue of the Egyptians using the wheel against one, well, they didn't have this, they didn't have that, they're so primitive, they didn't have the wheel. Well, the potter's wheel goes back to one of the creation story about the god Kanum creating man using a potter's wheel. So they understood wheels and rolling things way, way back at the very beginning. Now we have the difficult issue of defining what a wheel is. Now, war chariots were being used by 1700 BC, but that's a war chariot. So what is a wheel? Well, a potter's wheel is a wheel. Usually when people refer to the use of the wheel and the confirmed use of them, it's you know an axle with two wheels on either side as to, base, to make a cart. But this is a war chariot that carts were being used 1700 BC. You go, oh, well, that's a long time afterwards. True. Um, however, carts were being used, uh, by, you know, again, confirmed by um, 1800 BC because ex very clear, explicit evidence, but it is generally assumed that such vehicles were used as early as 1300 BC as an extension of the wheel because they knew about wheels even earlier. So it's you know, were they making carts with axles and wheels like that? And they had donkeys, they had oxen, and they had cattle, going back to the very um, early period. So, OK, but I want to see evidence, evidence, evidence. These things, they don't last very, you know, in over time. They get uh, worn out, broken. So, yes, but uh, to that, well, there's also another example. I think this is around 1300 um, BC, using these siege ladders and wheels on there. Uh, so this I might... Re Egyptians had donkeys, lots and lo lots of... The Mardi culture pre-Egypt even made donkey amulets. For some reason, the dynastic Egyptians didn't depict or describe donkeys very often. Uh, different ideas, you know, whether it was like a lowly animal and, you know, you didn't... On your tomb, you know, you generally didn't have that type of... You know, you wouldn't depict those things, but... The, the, I think there's like one place in East Saqqara, something like a million donkey mummies or whatever. So they didn't have pack animals, or they had oxen, uh, and they do show uh, they were using oxen to plough. So they knew this concept as well. Then will be, well, uh, you don't have explicit, explicit evidence. Well, my response to, to that will be, where is, there is gaps and assumptions that have to be made true. But on that argument, where is one single piece of this you know, advanced, sophisticated technology. So if the archaeologists are going to be held to a standard of evidence, then lost ancient high technologists can't weasel their way out of this and say, well, we're building this on assumptions and and uh, and beliefs, essentially. So if that's, you know, in the comment, oh, but, but, well, where is one single piece of this advanced, lost ancient high technology? Where is one reference to levitating singing priests lifting the stones and all these other types of things so uh rule for v but not for me uh never in the egyptian civilization did they grant them the use of the pulley it was it was literally um human horsepower ropes levers and wooden sleds that's it 
the Romans came along and the Greeks and they started using pulleys and force multipliers and stuff like that, but they don't, there's no evidence for that in the dynastic Egyptian Have you civilization. Ever had a- Apparently, there's no evidence. Well, they never grant the dynastic Egyptians the, <laughs> that they had pulleys. Now, there's an important point here, which you'll find uh, these lost ancient high technologists. I'll often say, well, the archaeologists and the, the, the mainstream say this. And so there's two things. Either they're lying about what the mainstream evil archaeology mafia is saying, or they're lying that they haven't read it. There is no way around it's a lie. It's a lie either way. But um, early history of pulleys and crane systems. Uh, what's this? Oh, it's an ancient Egyptian pulley. How about that? According to the accepted narrative, there is a consensus of invention of the pulley dating back to ancient Egypt. Uh, I think this one existing pulley. This goes back to 2000 BC. If I'm remembering rightly but it this is also a wheel there's an axle so the chariot wheel uh, but the concept of a wheel they use this uh, in well so it was first used for drawing water from a well and it's thought to be used in the construction of the pyramids as well as transportation in ancient Egypt the oldest pulley dates back to 12th dynasty and belongs to ancient Egypt and was used to change direct so it's a it's a, pull, a single pulley just changes the direction of it. If you have a compound pulley, I'll explain that in a moment. That is a force multiplier. So when was it? this exist? 1990 to 1778 BC. So it, it, they, they just make this stuff up. It doesn't exist, can't be explained. Because it's, it's again, lying that they've, that they've got any clue. You know, have you talked? No, they... They're lying that they either they're up, up to the research or they have read it and they're lying about that. Uh, great video as well. Um, ancient technology pyramid builders, the proto pulley. Uh, ancient architects, he shows here. So these are pieces of basalt. So when people think of pulleys, uh, these are also these are the Crenshaw. So these are surviving wooden pulleys from about the 5th century AD from a Roman port in Corinth. And when. Just go. For Okay, when most people think of pulleys, okay, we're thinking of something like this with uh, axles, you know, and all right, so these wooden ones, they're exactly the same. It's a double sheave pulley. Uh, here we see basalt ones where we have these grooves running over the top, and these were also like pairs of them sort of were found. So this is an important part to do with compound pulleys. One pulley is just like throwing a rope over a tree branch. It's just going to change the direction. But if you have double pulleys such as these, or triple grooves, uh, what you have now is a force multiplier. So there would be a triple sheave pulley. Or you know, you can, yeah, so, all right, now. Here's another example of a compound pulley used in ships. You got those, those three holes, so it's a triple. Rope runs around, one piece of rope, you loop it around, and what you have here is, in, and if you're unfamiliar with how compound pulleys work, it's, it is an, it's a magical anti-gravity device that you know, is ancient and we use. If you look up compound pulleys to get a better uh, idea, each time you loop the rope, you gain force. You, you have to pull the rope longer, twice as much, but you gain twice as much force. Actually, a little bit less because friction comes into it, but just to, in loop the rope, double the power. A trucker's hitch would be another example. Single piece of rope, uh, look up truck, trucker's hitch, truckies hitch, we call them here. It's force multiplier, uh, and a compound pulley system can be made with a single piece of rope. Uh, here's a single pulley, changes the direction, or of course the other way. Now you have your first compound pulley system. You have to pull the rope twice as much, but you get double the force. You double it up, you get doubling the, and now you're tripling the force. You can lift, move a massive amount with very little energy going in. This is uh, so when you see cranes and you see these things here, it's not like a bunch of ropes to support it. What we have is a compound pulley system. Modern cranes, most of their power is derived from this very ancient principle. You could replace the engine with manpower, but the, the gearbox or the capstan and the compound pulley system is 
what we still use, our modern technology and all you know still relies on this and uh, there's another clip okay we'll put it in post and so yes this you know pulleys did exist it wasn't the romans who suddenly come along started using force multipliers see evidence for that so again uncharted x bright insight and joe rogan you know adding to this it is just not true and you know again they're going to poo poo archaeologists and that they have a bmw lifestyle and they you know they're covering up history no, it's ex it's the exact opposite the lost ancient high technology people go out must either they don't know what the mainstream archaeologists say or they do know and are lying about it given it that they've been at it for years they take people on tours as if they're sort of experts you'd think that they would have done a little bit of work but either way it's it's all it's just wrong here's another this is an awesome video because it shows you the what a compound pulley is we don't need those bearings and such two broomsticks a piece of rope wind them around in such a way that slim little girl will always win and defeat powerful people because she understands mechanical advantage that is a compound pulley doesn't require the principle is just very very simple uh, yeah rope sticks and then we'll you look at egyptian ship rigging and uh you need this kind of knowledge to sail ships they were on the red sea they were on the mediterranean not just the nile domestic egyptian have you civilization. ever had a conversation with all the information that you have at your disposal like right off the top of your head have you ever had a conversation with a conventional archaeologist uh, that wants to argue this with you on law i mean on email a couple times but not in life what it's do they say on email it's 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 a lot of it. Is, I want to keep my job. That's what they say. <laughs> I think there's a bit of that. If you read my textbook, I don't textbook, know shit. I shouldn't be an expert, but I, fuck you. Yeah. I have. I bought a BMW. You piece yeah. of shit. You're trying I, to take it from I'm me. I'm tenured. Yeah, well, I'm they tenured. Do, they say like, oh, we know how they did it because they talk about it. So, for example, with the giant statues, right? There's there's a scene on a wall. It's called the the Duty Hotep image. And it shows the Egyptians, like there's, it's all you see these dudes in profile. It's an Egyptian drawing, definitely dynastics made the drawing. And there's 156 dudes when you count them all up, and they're pulling a statue that's tied to a to a to a wooden sled. Now, we know this statue. There's parts of it still exist. First, it's alabaster. It's not granite. Second, it weighs about 56 tons. That's fine. And and you're dragging it on a wooden sled. You can't use that to explain how you move a thousand ton statue. It's just, it's not like a sliding scale of difficulty. It's, it's a, you know, there's a, there's a curve to it. Like you can, you can move. I do grant them the ability to use primitive methods to move stuff up to like 100, 150 tons. But once you start getting to 400, 600, 1,000 tons, material failure, wood's not an issue. That literally sleds would just be crushed or driven into the ground. You know, you, you, it's, it's, there's a, there's an absolute, scale of difficulty that gets applied to these massive objects okay this little spiel about material strength and that moving and lifting weights is in a in a curve is the biggest pile of nonsense that you will ever hear this is a, this is how they do it create a problem that don't exist create limitations that aren't there it's impossible therefore we need to look at you know uh, lost ancient unexplored science te technologies ships weighing 10s 20s 30s for like the, the titanic i think it was 80 tons how were they launched on slipways they didn't use uh, some were using iron rails but using wooden rails to slide on ships was out you look at how what was in the dry dock it's all supported there on wood giant oil vessels when they put on cargo ships and barges they use wooden dunnage so that, that wood would collapse is just an absolute nonsense. Here's a screenshot, uh, Mussolini's monolith, 300 tonne block on wooden rails. And one of the cool features, important features about this is, firstly notice how they put the rails like in a V shape. So a rail on the outside and in a V, that would steer these very accurately, very precisely. So you can do it and you can also do it very precise, very accurate. Uh, but wooden and they didn't use squared off rails by having these odd shaped ones you don't get a suction cup effect but that's uh i mean using wooden rails it's just absolute again they've just invented this they present it as if it's fact they're so confident oh material flat they don't know what the hell they're talking about 
cedar of Lebanon. So there are, uh, in the Cairo Museum, there is these big sleds. They're made of Lebanese cedar. Uh, knowing the strength of these is very important to construction and to insur for insurance purposes. Uh, okay, so we have the uh, crushing strength. Now, let's start with uh, a mod uh, elastic modulus. One million, one and a half million pounds per square inch, but this is not the most relevant one. Then we have the crushing strength, three tons per square inch, 6,000 pounds per square inch, that's three tons per square inch. Now imagine if you were to cut a log in, you know, along the, just how you would normally cut a tree lump. Now, yeah, you're running parallel to the grains. So this one isn't particularly relevant either, but even at that weight, uh, three tons per square inch. What's the more important one is the modulus of rupture. So this would be to with rails and rollers. 11,890 pounds per square inch. Metric tons, 1,000 metric tons. The 1,000 ton statues, that's 2.2 million pounds. So you would need 185 square inches to reach the module, to reach the crush point, okay? But the, the break point. So we times that by a safety factor of three, that's 556 square inches. Now, it, let's even change that. Times six would be 1,100 square inches would have a safety factor of six when it comes to moving a 1,000 tonne block. So coffee table, 60 by centimetres or two feet, 24 inches by 120 centimetres, 48 inches, that's 1,116 square inches. That's the surface area of wood that you would need to support a thousand tons with a safety factor of six. So that the wood would be crushed under the weight of it is just so much nonsense uh, that along with everything else that they say, it is just a pure invent, create problems that don't exist. Use sciencey sounding facts absolute precision and the material failure and it's it's all made up now they will say well and that oil would be driven into the ground or driven into the sand well you look at uh, giant bulldozers how and tanks how do they travel over sand they got the tracks the tracks spread the weight not a problem uh, lay your rails down it spreads the weight over the sand but then like where were they moving a thousand ton statues over sand these are the guys who say that it thousand ton obelisks were going up and down mountains create problems that don't exist put situations that don't exist it is nonsense and if it was just one okay it's a mistake but you see every single thing that they say every single point that they make is wrong it has to be intentionally wrong because they're selling a mystery that it's a it's a cult it's a grift and and this is and then we get the boom boom and the comic because it's an apocalyptic cult they're obsessed with with the apocalypse that's what they're trying to get you into that's what the uh the game is the stone is just the, the entry point to get you into this wider cult of mystery whether it's ancient aliens or the, you know the ancient apocalypse always the same thing and then soon enough psychedelics ayahuasca uh, well it's uh every, everything they say is wrong this level of wrongness is by design. It, it has to be. You, you, by accident, they would occasionally get something right. I think that scoop mark stuff is absolutely a, a part of this ancient lost civilization. There was some, and it's one of their working areas. There's a tremendous value in seeing unfinished work because we get to have a little bit of insight into, you know, how did this tool potentially function? Yeah. What, how did it work? Like, but you have to have an open mind to kind of look at it that way. Um, we see the same thing on a couple of objects that are unfinished. It's, there's some incontrovertible evidence for machining and things like that uh, in other it's, objects. It hurts my brain. Yeah. It really does because you start thinking, like, what, what happened? Like, what are we talking about? Like, what, what, what kind of technology was available then? Like, yeah. when you think about uh, a completely different branch mm -hmm. of technology that was achieved 20,000 years ago or whatever it was, mm -hmm. you, you, you really – there's nothing there like you're just spinning your wheels just guessing right speaking That's of right. Yeah. technology uh jamie you should google the khufu ship because the largest vessel that's ever been found from ancient oh, yeah. egypt is a canoe basically and now <laughs> and there's no other depictions now i'm not suggesting that no one's suggesting that this boat was used to tug and and, and move around large stones 
But it's worth mentioning that of all the dis, you know uh, descriptions uh, that you see uh, or inscriptions, excuse me, this 140 foot long boat is the largest boat ever found. That's a bullshit boat too. Yeah, by it's, the a, way. it's yeah. a. I've said it before, and I feel bad, but it's a shit box in look comparison. At it. it is a total shit box. <laughs> it's such a bad design. Like, look at how low it, it has. Yeah, like very one. little depth in the water, yeah. so it will have very little stability. And then it's also top heavy. It's like driving around one, in a fucking sprinter van on a racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Never any top right over. Yeah, any wave at all is tipping that bullshit boat right. over. Yeah. And they found this right next to the pyramid, by the way. Yeah. All right, so the issue of were they able to move these on a boat? This is one that goes back even before the Rogan podcast. Uh, Jimmy's talked about, but because it, it's one of the constants, not just him, but it can't be carved, it can't be lifted. It, it, oh, this stupid narrative of they moved them by the water. Uh, you know, bring up the weight of cars, and okay, here's 45 cars, but you know, if you crush it, the car is mostly air, you crush it down, it's much smaller. But that brings the question where are these uh, alleged boats that would have moved stones as heavy as 1,000 tons? This shoddy looking boat, you know, from, from a primitive loincloth wearing primitives is again this other, uh, what's the, you know, psychological programming, you know, shoddy boat, loincloth wearing primitives. And then they bring up the statue, the machined impossible statues of people literally wearing loincloths. So again, it's this crazy double standard, but this canoe, this little tiny canoe, this little tiny canoe is 42, 43 metres, 142 feet. So it's basically it's a, just short of being categorised as a super yacht. Uh, that boat's over 400 tonne gross displacement. We compare it so it's longer than the unfinished obelisk. But displacement is the issue, the issue here. That's where it's stored. The important thing about the boat was that it was uh, basically an IKEA design where all the pieces were, were laid out individually and then they had marks to show how they go together the boat was then sewn together now another issue that bright insight is famed for bringing up is the flimsy rope and he shows the skinniest lowest quality level cordage this is a quality of rope that was found with the khufu ship there's other caves that they found bundles and bundles of high quality rope so again this the rope's so pathetic and it could never carry it. No, that's just not true because he goes out of his way not to show you these type of things. This is the way lost ancient high technology works. Loincloth wearing primitives. The boat was uh, sewn, like sewn as in sewing. In Kerala in India, they still make these type of boats where they sew them together with ropes. Um, now, for instance, uh, boats are riveted, um, but there are... Examples, for instance, uh, amongst the uh, Nordic, you know, Vikings, they were using sewn boats as well. And so this, yeah, was sewn together. Again, it's essentially it's a mega yacht, just just short of being a uh, mega yacht. And again, at this age, you know, what do you think it's going to look like? Um, this is also these higher prows is more of a set like the solar boat, which can be seen in depiction. So. Other boats have been found, the uh, uh, Abydos boats, they found like over 70 of them, they're very quite large. Now if you want to move something, just like now like a pontoon bridge, you get a bunch of boats, you tie them together and you lash a cover across the top. So you don't even need the giant boat to explain this, you can, you know, the concept of making a barge or pontoon is, you know, not a giant leap. Um, displacement 45 tonnes, that weighs about 20 tonnes, so about a 25 tonne cargo. Uh, looking at it, um, I think it's probably a lot more than that. But uh, I did it, cover this in an earlier video, but uh, I think it's more like 67 tonnes. So we're looking at probably about more closer to a 45 tonne ability to weigh. But even if it is the 25 tonne, to increase a small increase in size of the boat, 25% increase in volume, um, so in size, 25% is going to double the volume of the boat. So you just a little bit wider, planks a little bit higher, and you'll double that weight. So very small changes to this boat will change it to one that can carry the 80 ton impossible to lift blocks in the Great Pyramid. And he says there's no depictions. Now, then you'll bring up the, the Ben's going to bring up well, the little columns, knee high columns. Well, yes, so we see we, there are depictions, but 
uh, there are depictions of much bigger boats. And what's the important thing, which goes back to the pulleys earlier, is that the rigging of these ships is very, you know, you can't, with a crew, you can't rig, move a mast, get everything going uh, without mechanical advantage. So ro later Roman depictions, uh, the earlier ones were very dodgy, but the later ones were more detailed, and they showed they had pulleys, compound pulley systems and that type of thing like that. These primitive Egyptian boats, as they like to call them, had to have had either lost ancient high technology to operate them, or they were using the age-old system of ships rigging, which is a basis for all cranes and, and uh, lifting technology that we still use now. Then we, we do have depictions of much larger boats carrying much larger cargoes, even the expeditions and uh, where they were bringing, uh, they were sailing the Med, they were sailing the Red Sea, they were bringing back Red Cedar. And he says there's no depictions, which is bizarre because he shows this in his video, which is prior to the Joe Rogan podcast, so he definitely knew about it. He would just say, well, this is a cartoon. I want to see the depiction of it. And this is another thing that they, I want to see it cut. And you see, oh, they never showed pictures of them working stone. These are just cartoons by Egyptologists. You point out, well, actually, that's a diagram of an actual of a tomb painting. Here's the actual tomb painting. Well, I want to see I, blah, blah, blah. entitlement and then just cheating. You know, it's like, well, I, so where's the depiction? Oh, that's just a cartoon. They can wave everything away and then in, insert lost ancient uh, high technology um, rubbish. Now, they were moving two obelisks. This is Hapshetsut. Uh, also, the time it took to build. So again, these obviously pre-dynastic obelisks. Well, the obelisk and statues come from the later period, at the beginning, or ju just around the time of the Iron Age as well. So we bring in iron tools as well. So all the iron. Well, okay, and um, yeah, but we got to believe. You know, like don't believe these depictions. But again, if it comes to Plato, oh, we believe Plato. But how? But those boats. Okay, these boats don't explain thousand tons. Uh, there are depictions uh, and writings of older boats that were almost the size of air, aircraft carriers. Are absolutely huge. These were doubted for a long time because we had a, a you know these primitive people couldn't do them. Uh, and so, the, you know, how did those Romans move the giant obelisks, which they moved two at one time? So it would be you know approaching eight hundred tons uh, cargo on that particular one. Well, there was the riding of the Nemi ships. Caligula built two luxury yachts to cruise around the lake, which were you know, luxury, you know, luxury cruise liners, if you want to say, of the ancient time. Um, because they were, when Caligula was overthrown, they uh, destroyed the boats, the boats sunk into the mud, and they were preserved in the mud. Out in the ocean, we find old shipwrecks all the time, but we find them because of the cargoes. The wood has long gone away, but we were very lucky because this, the Nemi ships were found in the late twenties or, or f fingers more than over the thirties. Unfortunately, World War Two, um, in some bombing raids, they were burned, but we do have them, and um, absolutely huge. And these ancient ships built on ancient shipbuilding principles. Now the Romans weren't; uh, it, they learnt their shipbuilding from other people earlier people as well so they weren't they weren't advancing ships that romans weren't you know they were a naval power but they weren't uh, ingenious in terms of uh, of building ships so these giant boats how did they move a thousand ton statue well we put that you know in perspective so uh we have depictions and the rome ancient ships could absolutely absolutely carry this and again it's just oh look at this oh, they built a dinky canoe and oh that stupid archaeologist and oh, i want to see it tested well, if you want to see a thousand ton block, maybe you should bloody well invest in it. If you want to see a build an ancient ship, well, you should put the money into it instead of saying that the, you know the archaeologists, are, you know, are getting rich and and driving BMWs, and for this reason they cover up history. The fact is, these guys have either got no interest in history. Well, actually, they're covering it up because they do know it. And when they go on a podcast, to you know, they say there's no depictions, but they show the depiction earlier to the podcast, so definitely they do know it. Uh, so again, this is lies to sell this mystery. This, it's it's a cult. They, you know, it's about. Um, and then, you know, so we, history is full. We have gaps in World War One history, you know, let alone ancient history. Um, but then, it go, well, I want to see the evidence. Well, okay, there are places where we have to jump because we don't. We we see depictions of giant ancient Egyptian ships, but we don't have them. But we do have, or did have until World War Two. 
giant ancient Roman ships, which were, where did they come from? Places like Alexandria. And so if it's, well, I want to see the evidence, I want to see a block cut. No, 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 no. I want to see one piece of advanced lost ancient high technology. So if you want to, you know, like, it's fantasy land. It, it just doesn't exist. What they do is they create a problem which doesn't exist, place obelisks in, and increase their weight and put them in mountains which they did not come from in the first... Always adding... All, you know, the rollers didn't... The wooden rollers do work, but then they show the thunderstone which used bearings, therefore, oh, well, you know, they had to use bearings to do it. Well, it's a bronze sphere, so, you know, couldn't the ancients have done that anyway, but you don't need those. And so, yeah, and then it's... Uh, and it, before the thousand-ton one, it was... I want to see 50 tonnes moved, and then I provide that inf and show demonstrations of that. And now they go to 1,000 tonnes. They always shift the goalposts. You can't drill a core. Well, OK, here's a core. You can't cut copper. Yeah, you can cut uh, granite with copper. Oh, you can't do a polish down to one micron. Yeah, you can do a polish down to one micron. And then they just move it, and then they move it to, well, I want to see a Serapeum box built. Things like it would cost $45,000 US just for the raw stone, let alone paying for, for the workers to, you know, spend months and months at it. And this, you know, they so entitled that, you know, everyone must drop it for them when they're so lazy that they haven't done anything. And then, then again, of course, they cover up the information. And then through podcasts, uh, you just, it is this whole podcast industry now, and the latest one is Vases, and I'm going to get to that uh, very, very soon. But... Um, they have zero interest in, in truth, you know, they, you know, delicate wallflower, you know, delicate flowers, you know, de how dare you, you know, c you know, like, oh, you're so mean, they're mean, t you know, and accuse people all the time, and then they refuse to respond because I was mean to them. You don't know what mean is, but <laughs> you little... All right, so, yeah, it, this is all, all a nonsense. So it's pretty fun. And you get the same thing here. It's like there is a wall scene at Saqqara where they show... <laughs> A very small column on a boat like it's this it's a column that barely comes up to a guy's knees and it's on a boat it shows them shipping a small column and they go click See, on that one by your cursor Jamie no the one above it to the left to the left right there above it and to the left you gotta use the laser yeah. pointer that one yeah should have <laughs> imagine taking your kids on that you hey, wouldn't. kids be we're, we're gonna we're gonna get go out into the ocean on that <laughs> you, it's like a, uh, I don't know if that's an ocean boat your it's kids would be taken from whatever yeah. lay, even a yeah. river fuck yeah. out of here yeah that's for Everyone's like a pond. Everyone's gonna die. That's for a even... pond. <laughs> yeah, that's they a swan even... boat. Is there any evidence it's for even have afterlife? Life preservers back then? <laughs> Did they have a vest? It didn't Hold... matter because they had the hippos and crocodiles to take care of. Oh it. Jesus, <laughs> hippos and crocs! I forgot about those. But that's the point. The point that that significant in this is that that is the largest boat that they've ever found. And my point is, is that like if they're gonna claim that they were moving, you know, hundred ton stone blocks. Uh, on barges. I just want to uh, yeah. iterate that n did they, they've never found one and there was no inscription that shows anything large enough that would have done it. Right. 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 And there's also no inscriptions at all of the constructions of the pyramids. That's right. right. Zero. Yeah. Well, so th there is, there is, but not the big ones. There's a, there's a, there's a tomb of the nobles that's in a, over near, uh, on the uh, West Bank of the Nile at Luxor, but it shows them literally making mud bricks and building a mud brick pyramid. Mud, mud bricks, ah. which is all they made a lot of mud brick pyramids. Yeah, but later. <laughs> well, there was one person at one point in time that was speculating that the pyramids were made with concrete and that they uh, had yeah. devised some sort of a way to make concrete out of granite. The geopolymer theory drives, yeah. drives me nuts on a daily basis. But it seems like total horseshit. It is. Yeah. Is it, it is. There's, look, there's, there's, it's an especially interesting... Especially since they know the quarries. The quarries right there. There's literally holes in the ground that match the whole, like the objects that we have. There's Behind the middle pyramid is... The, the middle pyramid, they cut it out of a hill. Like, they cut it into a hill. It's crazy. Like, they had to cut down 40 feet at the back and, and put these massive tiles into the front, and they plopped a pyramid on it for some reason. But at the back in that in that area where they cut the wall down, it's a quarry. You literally see where there's... That's where they cut big blocks of limestone off. The, the, the little stubs from the blocks are still there. I mean, and yeah, not, we have quarries. And not only that, all the blocks are different sizes. They're not one-offs. Yeah. So if you were literally filling in geopolymer, you would have a lot that are the same size. You would have right. a, you know, you'd that's be filling do. it. And so since they're all different sizes, it's like that doesn't, that's not what you would have if they were filling. What is the speculation as to why they're different sizes? Like, why, why did they do that? 
Like one of the it's cool things really that you question. showed in one of your videos, which shows the similarities between the construction methods of ancient Japan and Peru mm -hmm. and Egypt, is that so many of these stones, they're like these odd shapes that like jigsaw puzzles, yeah. and they're fit in perfectly. Polygonal. Yeah. Yeah, they fit in. Oh, don't worry. That's just a coincidence. <laughs> these, these polygonal walls that are found in multiple continents around the world, the fact that there's pyramids in five continents around the world, there's it's oh, yeah. it's they say it's a coincidence. This is a natural uh, program. Your scale of them, like oh. the, it, it, it flies in the face of logic. Like the really the does. actual archaeologists that want to lock this down and try to come up with some sort of a conventional reason. <laughs> And you know some sort of an explanation that we can all get behind. Oh, they used pulleys and pushed them on logs. Like, yeah. shut the fuck up! <laughs> yeah. Just shut the fuck up. What you're saying doesn't even make any goddamn sense. It's way more likely that there was incredibly sophisticated technology that existed, and it's way more likely, in face of the evidence of the Younger Dryas impact theory, yep. that that shit was wiped out. And that we're talking about a really advanced civilization that lived a long time ago. That's more advanced than we are today but moved in a different direction. Like we that's, moved, that's have you ever had a conversation with all the information that you have at your disposal, like right off the top of your head? Have you ever had a conversation with a conventional archeologist uh, that wants to argue this with you? On lo I mean, on email a couple times, but not in life. What do they say on email? It's, it's, it's a lot of it. Is, I want to keep my job. That's what they say. <laughs> I think there's a bit of that. If you read my textbook, all the answers. I shouldn't be an expert, but I, fuck you. Yeah. I have. I bought a BMW. You piece yeah. of shit. You try to take it from I'm me. I'm tenured. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm they tenured. Do, they say like, oh, we know how they did it because they talk about it. So, for example, with the giant statues, right? There's there's a scene on a wall. It's called the the Duty Hotep image. And it shows the Egyptians, like there's, it's all you see these dudes in profile. It's an Egyptian drawing. Definitely, Dynastics made the drawing. And there's 156 dudes when you count them all up, and they're pulling a statue that's tied to a, to a, to a wooden sled. Now, we know this statue. There's parts of it still exist. First, it's alabaster. It's not granite. Second, it weighs about 56 tons. That's fine. And and you're dragging it on a wooden sled. You can't use that to explain how you move a thousand ton statue. It's just, it's not like a sliding scale of difficulty. It's, it's a, you know, there's a, there's a curve to it. Like you can, you can move. I do grant them the ability to use primitive methods to move stuff up to like 100, 150 tons. But once you start getting to 400, 600, 1,000 tons, material failure, wood's not an issue. That literally sleds would just be crushed or driven into the ground. You know, you, you, it's, it's, there's a, there's an absolute, scale of difficulty that gets applied to these massive objects.